Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Susan Lynn. I'm a psychic and a medium and a teacher and a whole bunch of other things, but that doesn't really matter. What matters is today you've tuned into WOW, the acronym for my video series called Way Out Wednesdays. Now, this happens to be number 24 in my video series, and I've covered a lot of things, some of them kind of way out there, <laughs> like how we're living multiple parallel lives right now at the same time. In that video, I discuss how I discovered there were multiple me's. One of the me's was a man. One of the me's was a child. Very interesting, right? Uh, all living our own individual lives. But I've also covered other video topics, which may not be out there so much. Like the last video I just did was the missing human instruction manual. The one that we got or we didn't get when we were born into this human body. Basically, we knew everything there was to know. And then we jumped into that baby body and we forgot everything. So that was my last video. So welcome to this video on alien intervention. Now, this is going to be way out there. I can promise you that. But um, we're going to do our best, right? So if you're new here, thank you for tuning in. I am a channel. So right now I am channeling my spirit guides. Now I can channel completely go into a deep trance state and allow the entity that is talking to me to really basically take over my consciousness. I was going to say take over my body, but honestly, that's frowned upon. <laughs> it's really frowned upon to have somebody running around, you know, for you to be experiencing some other entity in your physical musculature body. <laughs> so they tend to just take over your consciousness for some period of time. Now, I do have videos on my on my channel where you can go to the playlist and see that. You can see me channeling and, and you can see that they talked about things that were upcoming and they were correct in their predictions. But I prefer this kind of channeling where I would tell you that the spirit guides or the entities and energies that I'm speaking to and are speaking through me are about 50 to 60% of my consciousness. And Susan, the human part of this equation is 40%, if you will, of the consciousness. Now, what that does mean is that Susan is sort of buffering um, translating the information. They talk to me in pictures. They talk to me in words, ideas, thoughts, every imaginable way that you can think of. And then Susan, my task as the human counterpart to this is to assemble it all into sentences that make sense to humans. So let's get started. When I ask them, um, and, and you might be asking, who the hell is she talking to? <laughs> that's a great, that's a great question, isn't it? Well, I have a couple of different sets of guides, spirit guides, if you will. I have, I do political readings and I have a, a set of political guides that help me do those readings. And then in the way out Wednesdays, I'm sometimes talking to my higher self, my oversoul. Uh, sometimes I'm, ta I'm talking to a, what they're calling is a, li a liaison that my higher self arranges. So I would always caution you against just saying, I want to channel and who wants to talk to me? <laughs> We're about to talk about alien intervention. So I would suggest to you that you always make the intention to talk to, especially in the beginning, if you're starting to do this work, always make your intention to speak to someone that you're really certain about, like your higher self or even an ascended master like Jesus or Buddha. Uh, you can even honestly channel dead celebrities. That's a great way to get started, right? So you can find out things about them that you didn't know, and then you can Google it and see you know, what the accuracy rate is, right? This is a good, safe way to sort of get involved in this. But for me, I really want to have sort of an, a person or an energy, I call it a person because I'm a human, everything is people to humans, but I want to have an energy be the go-between. So I go to my higher self or to my main spirit guide and I say, hey, what do you guys want me to talk about on Wednesday? They tell me, and then they bring in 
the energy that would be best for me to talk to about subject. So let's get started. Alien intervention. So the first thing they want to say is that, you know, I mean, if you're watching this video, you might be like, this woman is off her rocker, which is fine. Totally fine. I don't, I don't care if you think I'm off my rocker or not. At this point, if you don't think there's aliens, God bless you, honey, because pilots have seen them. Military have seen them. They've been documented nine ways to Sunday. Presidents have come out. Ex-presidents, United States presidents have come out and seen them. Other countries' leaders have seen them. And honestly, if you think, if you're in your ego so much as to think that humans are the be all, end all to all that exist, then like I said, God bless you and good luck with that. So now that we've established that there are other forms of intelligent life, whether you want to call them aliens or angels or, uh, you know, whatever you want to call them, fairies, Sasquatch, don't care. Don't care. All of those things are true. And all of those things can be true at the same time. So what they're telling me right now, and also let me just say, I'm not the definitive source of this. I don't watch ancient aliens. I'm, I don't have a PhD in this via Netflix or any other way. I know nothing. I'm a blank slate. And that's why I like doing this work because I don't know what I'm talking about. When I tell you what they say, you can see that I don't know what I'm talking about. And then you could do the research and find out if I'm anywhere near the mark. So the first thing you want to talk about, and I don't know why, is Sphinx, the, the Sphinx, the Sphinxes in Egypt, uh, the Sphinx, don't know. They want to talk about that as having some kind of alien intervention or energetic connection. They also want to talk about the Mayans. They're going now to the Mayans, the Mayans and their temples they want to talk about. Um, they also want to talk about the Hopi, the Hopi Native American Indians. Um, I think, are they not the ones that talk about the star pe people are going... A lot of Native Americans really, you know, were on board with this, right? They were on board with something came out of the sky and it wasn't Jesus. <laughs> so um, they also want to talk about Easter Island. Uh, they want to talk about the Great Pyramids. They also want to talk about uh, the Roman viaducts, the Roman uh, viaducts. What was for water or something? It was Roman infrastructure, not only viaducts, but the infrastructure of the cities, the way the cities were laid out. Um, they actually even want to talk about the creation of the wheel, to be honest with you. All of these things were inspired by otherworldly um, help. Okay. Now I'm calling it intervention and they're calling it help because we're going to get into that as to where the difference is between maybe harm, help, and intervention. Three different areas, three different, completely different energies, if you will. So they're right out of the gate. They're saying we, and, and they don't like the word we, um, uh, galactic the, I mean, there's no words. Humans don't have words for this, right? So uh, other entities and energies have been influencing Earth for quite some time, since the beginning. Uh, they woke me up this morning talking about the place, the Pleistocene, Pleistocene. I can say these things when I'm not channeling. When I'm channeling, I don't have quite, as I mentioned, all of my, you know, facilities or faculties or both. Plas the place to police to scene that era, the ice age. They want to talk about that. They want to talk about how that was um, predated man. It, it predated modern man is what they're saying. I think modern man might have been at the very tail end of that. And, and anyway, uh, why do you want to talk about that? Because it's a big change, because it was a it was a marker. They're saying it was a marker in human evolution. Oh, so it was a marker in human evolution. Uh, they want to talk about how, um, okay, I know this is all over the place, but I'm channeling and these videos are somewhat free form. They're not, you know, they're, they're not produced. There's no production value here. Uh, it's just, it's a free form thing. So they want to talk about, before I lose their, their connection, uh, they want to talk about 
they're showing me like Cro-Magnon. They're, they're showing me the evolution of the human. They're showing me like a single cell embryo as well. The the evolution, and not to say that Cro-Magnon was a single cell embryo, but but this notion that there is a beginning, that there's this nascent beginning. There's 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 always a beginning, a spark, and then the evolution continues. Now they they're also wanting to say that we are a seed bank. I mean, this is going to get real deep and real crazy real fast. We're a seed bank, um, DNA, but, but other things, humans don't understand their own bodies. They, they think they do like, they think they understand the earth. They think they understand science. Again, there's this sense of ego and hubris of, we understand everything. We're figuring it all out. And yet we are simply very <laughs> rudimentary uh, life forms. <laughs> That's what they just called us, which is not very nice, but they don't mean that judgmentally. This is the, when I'm channeling, they're very unemotional. Uh, so when I pop out, you can see the difference in my, in my demeanor. If you watch, I'll pop out and have a reaction to what they just said. And then I'll go back into this sort of flat uh, demeanor that is the channeling. So uh, we're rudimentary. That doesn't. That is not in any way judgmental because everything is, everything is on a life path or a growth or an ascension path. Everything is on an ascension path. And they would say to you, humans, that that other life forms have chosen a very slow ascension path. And, and they're pointing to me, and I was going to get to this later, but I had a lifetime where I was uh, some water species, and, and I spent all my time just in the water, like sort of like a frog would, right? Um, it was a very placid life. It was a beautiful life. It, it was uh, very nurturing and nourishing to my soul. Uh, but I didn't grow, right? I didn't, I didn't have any challenges. So therefore, my soul was in stasis, which is not moving. It, it was, and, and they're not judging that either. This, the beauty of of our entire universe is that it, it's all happening at the same time, and anybody can be any part of this. So when you cross over from your human life. This stuff about karma and the wheel of karma, I mean, I guess I'm about to make some people mad. I don't know. Um, it's not necessarily true. It's free choice. You can participate on that wheel. They wouldn't call it karma or or uh, is Dharma different than karma? I think they're calling it Dharma. I, I think it's a, a life path. It's you choose. You're, you come down here. So, okay. So let's just call it what it is. So I was a frog in a past life and now I'm a human and, you know, talk about an awakening, right? Talk about a boom. Oh, hell, what did you do? You know, well, here you are, Susan, you better get with the program because you are now a freaking human on freaking earth th going through some dramatic changes, some really human sociological and environmental traumatic changes. So when we when I cross over, I don't have to come back to this earth life if I don't want to. What happens is you're, you're over there, you cross over, you have this sense of bliss, of eternity. You have a sense of eternity. And you know in your essence that you're never going to die. And that who cares if, not only who cares, but why not go back to earth and have a very quick, 100 year life or 80 year life or 50 year or whatever it is and be able to rapidly ascend your soul right and and as entities or human energies ascend their soul the entire universe the whole universe's vibration rises up again there's no judgment here but there is a sense of urgency that I'm picking up now that I'm channeling this, that
that that right as above so below i don't know if you guys a lot they're telling me i'm having a lot of you view, new viewers on this what on this particular video so you may not know about everything else that i've done so as above so below in the sense also that as on earth which if you wanted to you could say above or below it doesn't matter because it, there is no up or down up there but as it is here it is there so as we are going through this dramatic enlightenment and ascension this is also happening in the outer universes and there's this sense of urgency that that this is a real opportunity for us to as we ascend as we rise up and raise our vibrations that this is going to assist other realities other existences which are also trying to do the same thing because the, the the sense of urgency is that there's really a yin yang right there's all these things matter these things that you read about in religion a lot of it before it was bastardized and whatever used for power there really are some things in all the religions that are very helpful and and can be used to describe not only human existence but other existences so they talk about yin and yang the balance of power the balance of the sun and the moon so that's a really good way to put it they're saying we we don't want to live with only night yet we don't want to live with only day we want the balance and so they want to talk about the earth being out of balance and and this is something that that i've talked about a lot or they've talked about through me a lot they've often said we i got to stop using they because to be honest with you there is no they there's uh, a lot of they so there's a lot of different entities and in human terms species and races and whatever you want to call them um i don't know what word they just called themselves types uh types of energies um but when the united states get out gets out of balance the united states i'm sorry when earth gets out of balance you can think about earth having a vibrational balance right a vibration a, a you know a, a humming you know and when that gets out of balance whatever that energy that earth is emitting it sends out out of balance energy to other planets other solar systems other existences that we have no idea about it's they're explaining it to me like when you throw a rock or a pebble in a very calm water and you see that concentric circles emanating out from where the rock went in this is what's happening with planet earth we're sending out a distress signal now some of this distress signal is from humans but some of it is from earth itself earth itself is feeling distressed by the earth changes the magnetic changes apparently that are happening but also the changes that are happening because of humans on earth so there's actually a lot going on here on earth and not all of it related to humans but some of it is and that's causing this vibrational distress signal for lack of a better term for it and so that can cause intervention now again they talked about help help is not intervention help is we can help these humans by helping them align with or understand astronomy or helping them understand through astronomy the best time to plant their crops or we can potentially maybe we can help them under, help them with the invention of the viaduct or the or the wheel or the pyramids or i i don't know i also feel like they helped us with medicine they helped us understand quicker they quickened our understanding of plant medicine humans evolved faster with the help 
of these other energies. I'm going to try to stay on track here. Some of these other energies were neutral. Some of these other energies wanted something in exchange for the help. And some of these other energies are will not become involved unless they need to intervene. Okay? So there's three different types of alien impact on earth and or humans. So let's talk about intervention first. So what's happening with the intervention, which is happening now, is that you might say that this group of types of energies recognize humans free will they recognize it that they, they recognize means not only do they recognize it but they honor it okay honor they honor it uh, because you can recognize something and then take advantage of it like you can see this car has the keys in the ignition and be like i recognize that that keys are in the ignition and i recognize i'm going to take that car right so you can recognize the keys are in the ignition and honor the fact that it's not yours that's a very big distinction they're making here i hope you understand what the guides say there's a whole lot more import to what they say than what the words are saying okay you can infer for yourself now these entities and i'm sorry i'm going to call you entities i'm tired of making up names i don't know what else to call you these entities that are involved now because of the intervention there's an active intervention happening on the earth plane right now because earth is out of resonance it's it's uh, there's a i don't know what you call that when you have a plus minus you know what i mean a uh, range range it's out of the range it's out of the accepted range right so of course they're going to allow for humans to do a lot you know you might be saying to yourself well why didn't they intervene during world war ii why didn't they intervene during the holocaust why didn't they intervene during the native american slaughter why didn't they intervene in during the you know 1960s with the racism right i get it they're not going to intervene this is what i'm saying they honor our free will we the guides always say this us humans we can kill each other they're just going to honor us they're going to honor our free will choice where the buck stops is when we get out of that range so you can we can kill each other and harm the planet and do a whole bunch of stuff but when the overall energetic weight the energetic reading or the energetic accumulation of that energy reaches a certain you know point out of that range once it goes past that range then it starts affecting the other existences right that's when they send in the planetary police and they're like what in the hell are y'all doing down there wrecking this place you you know it's basically like when your neighbors having a party and they're making so much noise that you can't sleep you've been up till you know 3 30 4 in the morning nobody can sleep and you finally call the cops so they've called the cops on us and the cops are here and the cops are like okay yeah this place is trashed <laughs> they can only help us get it back within the bounds the, the energetic range but but i'm i don't know about you but i'm thankful now how are they doing this well what they show me is you're seeing it now you're seeing it now you're seeing the light the light is shining and and if you and some of this has to do with astrology right i mean some of this also has to do with astrology and i don't know if the astrology allows them to have greater impact is what they're saying so if so right they've been here as part of this intervention since the 80s and uh when the astrology is favorable it allows them to have a bigger impact on our energy so right now the astrology is favorable and uh we're sweet we're going into the age of aquarius and a lot of things are happening 
and the humans are ascending. There's just a lot going on. So their impact is like quadrupled. So this is a really good time for the intervention. And they're saying, you know, we can't always intervene to the degree that we that we need to. But this is the time we can. And how you see it is the light. You see people that have been getting away with crimes in leadership positions are now being brought to the light and brought to justice. Uh, the next thing we'll see is this level of in just incredible violence that's happening in the United States is being addressed, is starting to be addressed. And within the matter of a year to two years, the landscape regarding this gun violence is going to change uh, tenfold is what they're saying. Tenfold is what they're saying. It's, it's, it's a convergence, an energetic convergence. Again, uh, astrology, the intervention, the, all, all of these energetic things are, are converging to make this really happen very quickly. Okay, so they're intervening. Also, um, I'm, I just asked them about the environment, if they were intervening about the environment. They, they're they saying no. They're saying Mother Earth is, and that's what I call her. That's not what they call her. Uh, the Earth uh, energy, uh, I don't know what they call her. They call her a planet. <laughs> the planet uh, will take care of itself. Um, it's very capable of <laughs> removing us. It's very capable of removing humans. It's very capable of, of also moving us. I don't know how to describe this except for that. So if certain parts of the earth, of the planet, are experiencing extreme environmental changes, humans won't live there. Humans will move to a place where there's not. And in this way, the earth is hurting us if you will, I'm trying to use human words to describe what I'm seeing. The earth will herd humans to pockets um, on the globe. Uh, so each continent will have pockets of humans and there will be other parts of that continent, which will be what they're saying, uninhabitable by humans. Um, and, and, and it is what they're, so, you know, listen, when I'm channeling, they're not emotional. It is what it is. They don't, there's no emotion here. Uh, so that's intervention. Now, um, if I were to ask them, are they done with intervention? They're saying you will know us. So I, I don't know if that means disclosure. I, I don't like the word disclosure because if, if I don't need disclosure, I've already been disclosed. <laughs> I'm, I'm a star seed. I mean, and that's a word that doesn't really describe it either, but I've had five lifetimes in the Milky Way. So I'm an intervention. I'm an intervention. I've only been human for five lifetimes. That's very little lifetimes. And not too long ago, I was a frog and I was happy. And, and, you know, when you get these Akashic record readings and you find this stuff out, it really helps because honestly, truth be told, I could do my entire day's work from the bathtub. I could do my readings from the bathtub. I could do this video from the bathtub and be honest with you. I've thought about it. I spend hours a day submerged in water. And you know what? I always thought that was weird. And, you know, frankly, a lot of other people thought it was weird too, but now I know I'm just going back to my old frog self, right? I'm just happy in water, right? I had gills. Okay. So it helps you understand yourself. I think, I think tools like this are helpful. So I'm an alien intervention, right? Those of us who haven't incarnated here very long, when we came here, if you want to talk about vibration, I wish I had better production values because I could maybe put something on the screen that would describe what I'm seeing in my head. But I'm seeing something that's rotating like this. So everything vibrates, right? I mean, in reality, according to physics, 
we're all just a big vibrating mess of atoms or whatever they are, particles. So my energy, your energy, all of our energies vibrates at a specific vibration, speed, whatever you want to call it. It's in, in humans, we have a fingerprint and that makes us unique. But energetically, our vibration makes us unique. Our vibration is our energetic face. So my vibration, when I came into my family, God bless them, uh, I was vibrating like this and they might have been vibrating like this. So you can see my very presence was disruptive. And I can pretty much just go ahead and tell you it was disruptive. I was disruptive to my family in all ways. Uh, I was born not a racist. I was born in a racist family. Um, I was born an environmentalist. Um, you know, I, I was literally, you know, from a different planet, to be honest with you, um, not to put, put it on the nose too much, but I really was. So I came, that's a disruptor. I'm a disruptor. Even if I'm helping people, my, my soul's path on this planet is to help people, is to teach people. But my energy can be very disruptive. And I spent a long time being a disruptor. Okay. So I, I went from the warrior sort of to the counselor. I, I did that whole transformation in my lifetime. Right. But so the disruptors, that's intervention. Okay. Now you can be from a different planet and be a disruptor. Let me rephrase that. I don't know what else to call us except for star seeds, but star seeds is not a good name because people use it for all different meanings. You can be a new incarnator. You could be a new incarnator to this solar system and be a disruptor, but in a good way. You're disrupting. It might be like this and your family might be like this, but you're this could be love and light. And your family could be violence. So you disruptor doesn't mean that we are bad or good. It means you're disrupting. And, and generally, we're disrupting with light. We don't come down here typically to be mass murderers. Okay. Um, so typically, the majority, 98% or maybe 96%, are disrupting with light. There are a few, there's always a few bad apples, always. So um, I, I wanted, they wanted to, I, I got off on a little tangent and they wanted to talk about, oh yeah, they wanted to talk about disclosure. So um, I don't know, why, why do you want to talk about disclosure? Um, you will see us, you will, you will feel, you will feel us, you will, you will, you will feel us. You will know us. You will know us. See, I'm not so sure. Feel and know. Yes. Why? Why do you feel the need to disclose? Uh, it's part of the intervention. That's part of the intervention energy. If we don't, we have, of course, they're honoring our free will. Now, remember, harm help intervene. Okay. So help is honoring help is we really not going to get involved because you have free will. Okay. Um, intervene is, well, we're intervening. We're not going to honor your free will. We're going to go in here and we're going to help you as much as we can to regain some balance so that you'll stop effing up the rest of our galactic neighborhood okay so if the help that they're giving us by the light by dropping knowledge into say those people that would be doing the good work of humankind that's what they just said they're dropping knowledge sacred knowledge advanced knowledge into the minds, into the hearts and souls of those who would be responsible with it. 
those people that are responsible with it can now have this additional knowing and knowledge that can help them solve our problems, be it with war in Ukraine or injustice or racism or violence, whatever it is. Okay. So this is not just for the United States of America. Obviously, this is for the world. Those who can be responsible with this knowledge are being given it. They don't really know. They're not all going to know because what happens is, is that once a human has an interaction with an entity or a type or whatever y'all are calling yourselves, it gets so fixated on the fact that they just had an experience that they get, they, they don't, they're not on their track anymore. They're, they're distracted. So they don't want that. They don't want us to be distracted. They want us to do the job. So they're going to help us by dropping this knowledge in. And then we just think it's, we had a bright idea. I had the craziest idea. I don't know where I got this information, but I just know it's true. These are things we say when we have psychic hits, when we have claircognizant information. And we can't explain it. I can't explain how I know. Just trust me on this. How many times have you heard people say this? Well, now these scientists or sociologists or leaders or even investigators or whoever they are, average citizens, who, who knows, will be gifted this information and they will think it's theirs. That way they will act on it. Now, if that doesn't work, if they do that, that's that's kind of like phase number one or phase one through three or something like that. If that doesn't work and, and it doesn't have work means if it doesn't have the requisite response. Right. If it doesn't bring us back in the bounds of vibration. They'll continue doing that, that they don't want to go to disclosure. But they will, because that would shock humanity into coming together. So humanity might see the disclosure as an attack or as a, a it'll, it'll be a reason for humans to huddle up instead of be fighting each other. You know, that's a lot of times why countries go to war, right? When you go to war, your people all of a sudden are united behind the country, you know, the jingoism, the patriotism, right? So in this way, if they have to, they can have this big disclosure that would cause humans to huddle up and stop killing each other. And that would bring everything back into bounds. And no, they're not worried particularly about humans killing them. I mean, it's not that it can't happen, but they're not worried about that. That's these these, these plans are made, y'all. This this is these are. It's almost like I'm looking into the future, and the future's already happened. Except for that, we get to choose the future we want to happen. Right. So, you know, if you go to the vending machine and you push D3, you know that you're going to get whatever you just saw in the window that's on number D and three. Right. So we push the button for the future we want. They've prepared the outcomes. Not the outcomes. They've prepared the responses to our choices. Then our free will choice mixed with their response puts forward an outcome, at which point we leapfrog, theoretically leapfrog, into a new outcome, a new paradigm. A paradigm in this case doesn't mean existence. It means a new paradigm, meaning a new place where the forces that are at work are in new positions. I don't know if that makes any sense to you guys. 
Okay, the last thing I'm going to talk about is, and I, I'm sorry, y'all, I got to rush because I don't have all day to be doing this video for real, y'all. I'm being insolent. I, I want to talk about harm. Okay, one moment, please. Let me just drink some coffee. They said the message is not complete. <laughs> okay, please help me complete the message. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I might have given the wrong impression about this disclosure. I might have given the wrong impression in the sense that I used the word war. And I used the analogy of war, and that brings people together. And this has struck a discordant tone with their energy. So I would like to restate that in a better, more accurate manner. They are not at war with us. They do not want war with us. War is futile. It's not war. It, it's intervention for our own good. We're at a crisis point. Humans are closer to crisis than they know. We are at a, a tipping point. And this intervention, this disclosure, I mean, okay, all right. They said, they said, we know you have a problem with disclosure, but we're using the word disclosure. I said, okay. Um, this disclosure is meant to bring humans together under a common cause. This disclosure is meant to bring humans together to show humans that, that they can trust each other and love one another. And it's in their best interest for them to work together to stay together, to honor each other, to honor life. Life, um, life has become transient, too transient in this timeline for humans. Um, they wish to help us ascend. And some humans, and, and they can't, they can't predict the word. I don't think they can't predict how humans will respond to a disclosure. They mean disclosure like, you know, I'm channel 13 and here I am standing behind a spaceship that just landed. <laughs> that kind of disclosure. OK, uh, they can't predict how humans will 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 react. Humans are can be not are can be have been known to be warlike. Uh, so they cannot predict how humans will react to this. This is why it's not their first, uh, it's not their first, second, or third preferred way to wake us up and to help us. Uh, it's a, a, almost a next to last resort. I don't even want to know what the last resort is, but it's the next to the last resort. So should it happen, it's done with love. And, and, um, and we hope to experience uh, love and acceptance and uh, indeed, we will help humans feel more love and acceptance by manipulating, lack of a better word, their energy uh, to give them a sense of well-being during this event. Um, however, there will be others that perhaps will not be at the event or not experience this well-being, and they may have a different vibrational response to this event and uh that we cannot predict we 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 cannot predict humans humans are unpredictable we can predict them within some you know range but we cannot predict them always <laughs> we've been surprised by humans in good in a good way we've been we've we've been pleasantly surprised many times by humans and human choices therefore we we would not say that this event is going to be uh this disclosure event is going to be harmful or make uh humans be warlike or make them be um 
violent. Everything that we do within the intervention, everything we do within the scope of our intervention is for the highest and best good of all life, all energy forms. They are complete. Okay, now. I'm going to briefly talk about energies that are neutral and energies that are harmful. They don't really want me to talk about it, but I'm going to briefly talk about it. Um, Neutral energies. I have a lot of experience with neutral energies. Neutral energies uh, could be any kind of energy, right? I mean, it could be Sasquatch. It could be a fairy. It could be an, an, it could be a, some sort of entity from a different, realm, an alien, whatever you want to call it, um, they're, they often find us curious uh, and, and, they, and they wish to experience what humans experience. They, they sometimes want to experience, again, humans are getting to experience this very precious, very unique, very sought after experience. I know, I know, I know it's like, well, you can have my experience. I'm going back to being a frog, but we really do have this amazing experience here. And there is, there is a cue. There is a line of souls or energies, entities wanting to come here and experience this. This is, you know, a galactic Disneyland on steroids that people want to experience that people, I know I'm saying people because I'm a person, but anyway, so there are a lot of entities that want to experience this. They want to experience, believe it or not, they want to experience pain. They want to experience joy. They want to experience passion. They want to experience pain. They want to experience the wind on your skin, the smell of fresh flowers or fresh food or all of these amazing, you know, senses that humans get to have. Remember, I was, for lack of a better description, a frog, okay? I didn't have a lot of experiences. I was quite happy with the cool water that I was in. I mean, very you know, one dimensional experience in a way. This is a, like a, a prism of color, a a whole prismatic experience of everything that you can imagine all at once. So these neutral energies, sometimes they come in, they want to experience things with you. Um, They can talk to you. They can visit you. Um, You have to give them permission to come in and channel them. That's why I said in the beginning of this video, I don't suggest that you just channel anybody who wants to talk to you. That's kind of the problem with a Ouija board. People just say, who's here? And then you're you're a little bit sometimes surprised about who answers the phone, right? So humans, and because we're so limited in our thinking, right? We, we think we're the apex. We think we are the shit, right? We think we're it. And then we realize rather, you know, surprisingly that we're, you know, a gnat on the back of a, you know, horse's patootie. We're, we're, we're a very small entity. We're a fabulous entity in what we're experiencing and how we're growing and how our soul is expanding but we're very limited because of our humanness. So when we as a human interact with these unlimited energies, well, they have unlimited abilities, unlimited abilities to, you know, teleport, to uh, have telepathic communication, to have psychic knowing. We don't have that developed. We do have it but we haven't chosen to develop it yet to the degree that we can. So 
when we start thinking that we are all this and, you know, a piece of chocolate pie, and then we meet someone that has this immense kind of power, energetic power, be very disconcerting, okay? So I have found that these neutral entities uh, can sometimes play with us. Uh, they can be tricksters. They can uh, enter our thinking, our meditations. If you're astral traveling, um, they can play with your um, with your pendulum. They they just we're like we're like playthings to them. Okay, at this point in the in our development, they're like we can be playthings for them. So you always want to have an intention. Always have an intention. I am working with the light. I am aligned with the light. I'm always working with my higher self. I'm always working with my spirit guide. I'm always working with your ascended master, whatever it is. Okay. And, and it, it, hey, if you want to work with dragons, that's cool. But you better know that dragon. You better know the energy of your spirit guide. What does that feel like? So if some energy comes in and is impersonating that or is tricking you, you can have the discernment to go, wait a minute, this isn't really, this doesn't feel right. Let me disconnect. Let me ground myself. Let me clear my energy. Now that I've done those things, let me bring my energy back into my center and from my center, from this strength of being here, now I'm going to reconnect. So these things aren't meant to scare you. This is instructions. These are instructions. Driving a car without instructions is scary. But if you know how to drive a car, it's not scary at all. Learn the instructions. Teach yourself. And also own your power. When we don't own our power, somebody else is going to own it. Whether that's your boss, your spouse, your kid, your dog, your cat, your horse. The neighbor, whatever, or an entity. If your power is not being used, somebody else is going to use it. We talked about in the very beginning about how the keys are in the car, yet the entities, and I'm sorry I'm calling you all that, but I don't know what else to call you. The entities that honor our free will are like, oh, Susan left her keys in her very nice car. Hmm. And they keep on walking. There's other entities that are going to be like, Whoa, Susan left her keys in the car. We're going for a ride. That's you when you don't recognize your abilities and you're just blocked them. You've closed the door. And in my case, I nailed that sucker shut at one point. Well, y'all, on the other side of that door, there's a whole party going on of entities that are using your abilities jacking up your energy, taking your card for a joy ride, and they're going to return it wrecked or leave it on the side of the road somewhere. So we have to bring our power back to us. Get centered, get stable, get grounded. Bring your power back. You can simply just say, I'm calling my power back, you know? All in it back to my body. Feel your body. Be in your body. Humans, half the time, we're not even walking around in our bodies. We're disassociated because we don't like our lives or we're sick or whatever, many thousands of reasons. Get back in your body. Feel that. Okay, I'm present now. I'm, I feel it. I'm here. I'm, I'm in my body, okay? So tricksters, you just send them on their way or you call Archangel Michael. Uh, I'm not a religious person, obviously, but religion and the tenets of the various religions are not really owned by those religions. Uh, so Archangel Michael is a free agent. Buddha is a free agent. Jesus is a free agent. Mother Mary, blah, 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 on and on and on. You don't have to be religious to 
use or have or acknowledge or accept their help. So I call in Archangel Michael, but I also use Metatron. I find that for, for me personally, when I'm dealing with these other types of energies, which are from other realms, that Metatron is the best thing for me, is the best entity energy tool for me. But you will find your own. You guys, I have my own in, unique fingerprint. You do too. You may use angelic energy. You may use something completely different. And you're going to find the best thing that works for you by being quiet and allowing this information to come to you. The last thing is really quickly, those that would cause harm, they want to cause destruction, derision, infighting, violence, anarchy. They, they, they feed off of fear. They feed off of power. Um, and I think I said in the very beginning of this that the that humans were seated, and uh, some of the reasons were good, and some of them were not good, or some of them that's not correct. Some of them had a a cost. There was a cost associated with the help. Okay, so this is what I would say: is there there is, in my opinion, in my experience, I've had not so great experiences with aliens uh not would not rate it i would give it one star to be honest with you some of you have had five star um would recommend everybody do it great we're all different remember our fingerprints right i've had the one star variety um so i can just say to you that there are some entities whether they're whatever you want to call them that um have their own agenda and their agenda is their agenda. It doesn't honor, in my opinion, humans' free will. Now, the important thing that I need to tell you is that they have to honor free will. Surprise, surprise. Nobody tells you this, right? They just say, oh, this is a big bad alien in your bedroom when you're a kid or when you're whoever, whatever age you are. And you're paralyzed and they take you up and they do all these things to you. Well, they don't tell you you have free will. Because if we all knew, if humans knew that we have free will, it would be game over. They'd have to go to some other planet to jack with them. So what I say, it's important. This is very, very important, is I know that you know that I have free will, number one. Number two, I know that when I tell you that you have to bugger off, that you have to do it because I have free will. They leave. Then they're like, okay, game over. This isn't fun anymore. I've been found out. This human's not fun anymore. It's like the cat that finally the mouse isn't playing anymore. And, and they're like, ah, well, that was no more. That's not fun. So you guys, Stand in your power and know that you have free will. You have free will to tell these entities and these energies to leave. But you, but I find that they don't believe us. When we say, I have free will, go away. They're not going to believe us. That's basically being a victim. You're scared. You're fearful. I get it. I've been there. I'm not saying, I'm not judging you. I've been there. Truly. I'm saying that when you also say, get out of here, you stand in your power, you're mad, you're angry, get out of here, stop bothering me. That doesn't work either. You have to use the magic word. You have to tell them that you know, I know that it's, it's law, it's universal law. I know you're breaking universal law by breaking my free will right now, so get out. And I'm calling, you know, the universal law police. That's the game changer. Because they've tricked us. They've fooled us. They've, in some ways, I, I want to say it's true. They've enslaved us because in the sense that 
these kinds of in, these kinds of abductions and interactions run in families. I know that I get it on my dad's side of the family. I know that I had an experience with my grandmother that I saw a ship in the backyard when I was probably eight years old, when I was happened to be staying at my grandmother's house and we were both sleeping in the same room and I woke up and saw the ship and she was sitting straight up like as if she had been lifted up out of her bed. And she turned her head to me in this very odd way and looked at me and I looked at her and on just past her was a window and out the window in the backyard was a ship. So we're enslaved in the sense that once they start with a family line, somewhere along the line, that family member gives permission. Now, permission is a, a thing I need to do a whole nother video on. I, I, this video is getting too long. You don't want to ever give anybody permission. Period. End of story. Because if, once you give them permission, they've got permission. <laughs> so you can say, hi, I want to work with somebody who wants to answer me. You're giving them permission to talk to you. You're giving them permission to interact with you. Not suggested. So it gets started in this family line where some dodo gave them permission and then signed the rest of us up. And then it follows us. Okay. So you have to revoke permission. Revoke permission. Remember, you have free will. So you say, as a human with free will, I'm revoking any permission that I've given to any energy, entity, being, anything that does not have my soul's highest good. End of story. Okay. So I really could talk about this apparently for three hours. I had no idea. I have no idea how long this video has been going because there's no timer. So I'm going to end it here. I know you guys are going to have about 10,000 questions and that's okay because actually I love this about Way Out Wednesdays. You guys in the comments are the best commenters on YouTube end of story. Go to any one of my Way Out Wednesday videos and read the comments. The comments are better than the video because so many of you have had experiences and it enriches all of our knowledge to read about the experiences. And it also allows us to know that we're not alone, that we're not in this by ourselves, that indeed a lot of other people have had experiences like this, right? So check out the comments, leave your own comments. I do try to answer as many of the comments as I can. I do read all of the comments. And I just want to say thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. And I want to say thank you so much for supporting this video series, Way Out Wednesdays, uh, which is every Wednesday, uh, a video will drop with a very interesting topic from A to Z, literally. Uh, take really good care of yourself and know that I am not the font of all knowledge, that I can be wrong, that you need to find out if this resonates with you. And then I encourage you to go on about your journey and learn more, right? Find more resources. Wherever you go, try it on for size. See if it fits you. If it does, take it in. If it doesn't fit you, simply put it to the side. There's no reason to vilify anybody. It just wasn't for you, right? So take really, really good care of yourself. And I'll see you again right here on this channel, especially if you subscribe, you'll at least know when it's Wednesday because you'll be seeing me on your phone or computer screen. Take really good care, you guys.